So the second piece on the program will be by uh, William Mayer. And we're pleased to have his wife, Mary Mayer, here tonight, uh, this afternoon. And she's coming to introduce uh, Bill's music. So if you can come up, that's great. Otherwise, I can come down here. So I, I have a couple of questions for you before you get started on your speech. So, uh, Bill Nair, uh, I knew him very, very well, jolly fellow, and as I told Meredith, uh, we met and probably haven't seen each other for 55 years. So, that's a long time. Nevertheless, uh, I knew him very well, and I conducted some of his uh, chamber music, and uh, we also know his son Stephen Day very, very well. He's a world-renowned pianist. We're going to hear from him later in the program. Now we're looking forward to what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a nice introduction. Great light light light. Light. Yeah. Is this working? Okay. 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 So, great. Good. Yeah. I want to say, first of all, thank you to the Musicians Club for having this concert, oh, especially to Jean Townsend for all the energy she put into it. Tremendous lot of work, and she they all, everyone did it but me, and, and <laughs> coasted along. Uh, and now you have, you have program notes that are going to inform you a lot about Bill. So I'm not going to talk about, I mean, about his music. I'm not going to talk so much about his music. I'm going to talk about it for a moment, about what kind of person he was. Uh, he, he came from a New York family, very New york -y. I knew him from the time we were six because we were in the same class in the Horace Mann School. And uh, he was Billy Mayer, and uh, we paid a lot of attention to him for various reasons. He was always fun. He was the joker of the class, among others. And he also he came from a family that was very interested in the arts. And his father was an amateur violinist, but he worked in Wall Street. <laughs> And his mother was a writer, and she had written a book, which everyone knew in my generation, called Tina Mina. A Tina Mina was a little girl who just screwed up everything. <laughs> and uh, of course, the kids who read it were amused and also a little afraid they might be Tina Mina. Bill always said he kind of thought he, uh, his mother had modeled Tina Mina on him. <laughs> But anyway, he, grew, uh, he, he got along upon even as Tina Mina, and uh, his mother died when he was 11, which was a terrible blow, really. But uh, he loved piano, and he, when he was sent off to prep school, the piano teacher was his great friend and got him through somehow. He was in the, uh, in the Second World War. He was magically turned into a Japanese scholar. He learned Japanese and spent a rather magical year in Japan in a small city where he made many friends. And he came back to Yale, majored in history, but music was calling him. And he, on an impulse, signed on to the Manus College of Music, which was then just the Manus School. And at that time, Manus was, uh, the faculty was mostly Viennese, and they had a very dim view of American education. And he was immediately made to feel a little bit like a grade school kid again. But he learned the Schenker theory of composition and worked very hard to manage to recruit and get through Bannis. And at night, he was writing pop music. He loved yeah. pop music. And one of his songs got hooked by uh, Burl Lives. And that got him started writing kids music. And, and that, that was called Bongo and his baboon drum. And then he got uh, uh, taken up by the Little Orchestra Society, which commissioned orchestral pieces for, kid, for their kids' concerts. And pretty soon he was writing for adults. And from then on, it was adults. But he never lost his sense of fun. And that was what I think many of his friends still remember. Uh, he got 
checked in, uh, in, in opera by writing a something that my sister actually suggested, an, a, a Christmas opera called One Christmas Long Ago, which was very popular, played all over the country. <laughs> and then he, uh, that led to his interest in opera, which it culminated in an opera he wrote based on the autobiographical novel by James A. <laughs> called A Death in the Family. And uh, that was clearly uh, in some way echoing his own childhood. But it, that opera, he spent a great deal of his latter years on. And it was performed in this country and in Europe. It was, uh, won a prize in Europe and it was televised. So he was very gratified by that. I would like to say one thing, and that was that the two of the composers here tonight were very good friends and supporters of Bill, and one of them was Otto Luning. He, Otto, Bill knew from way back, and Otto Luning was very active in a, a record company called CRI, which I hope some of you remember, yeah. no longer exists, but it was a godsend for composers. And uh, Otto got Bill interested in it. Bill was on his board for year after year, many, many years, worked very hard for it. And then I'd like to also mention that Greg Smith was a wonderful uh, contributor to Bill's music. He, he performed his choral works beautifully. Oh, what a chorus that Greg Smith had. And he also invited Bill to be part of his Adirondack Festival, which was a, a wonderful treat in the summertime. So thank you, both of them. Uh, you're going to hear Ariel, Enter Ariel, which was um, based on five poems with the enormous differences in, in focus and in style. But I think they all of them really re represent Bill's personality and his spirit. They, they have a sense of brevity of life and also of the sadness of life and, of course, some joy and finally a quirky little humor, which was always part of Bill. Uh, they are going to perform by the pianist Nessa Kale uh, and Mr. Todd Graves on the clarinet, and the soprano is Brittany Palmer. And that's what you will hear next. <laughs>